No harvest is an achievement in Balloon's Tower Defense 6, where you complete a game of chimps on cornfield without removing any of the corn on the map. And two mega pops is an achievement where you get two million or more pops with a single tower in a chimps game. But can you do both at the same, well, the same game? That's where the Flying Fortress is going to come into play. And if this is, well, more than easy enough, I might do another video with just the Spectra. A standard start I like to do on this map is the NG Dart Start. This is one of the most commonly used strats when it comes to some of the toughest maps in the game. Other ones would be like three Dart Monkeys. Once all these loose reds are gone, then I'm going to go to first so that this engineer is always aiming this way. Okay, so now we're going to get ourselves a Ninja Monkey. This is going to be our Camo Popper, but also later it's going to be our Balloon um, Sabotage. That's going to be our hero for this video. Usually when I go with like Geraldo for support, but honestly, when it comes to the early game on Cornfield, I prefer Pat. His high damage is very nice to have, especially when it comes to like pink balloons and skipping layers when it comes to black balloons. Oh no, why? <laughs> it's going so well. On all the yellows. I should have done that really. Put the ninja on strong and then once it gets to that point where all the yellows are removed, then go to back, go back to first. Oh well, we live and learn. No black border for cornfield for me today. I got the gold border, but not the black border. Really? A pesky red balloon? Really? For goodness sakes. Fine, we'll put you on strong again, then go back to Oh, if we need you to! That seems to be good. But what about a second wave of yellow balloons? Because there's two waves of yellow balloons on this round, and we certainly did that okay. Okay ish. Okay, I'm gonna put you down and just just have bigger globs. Nothing nothing too fancy, just a bigger globs glue gunner. Nothing lethal about it. There we go. That's the bulk of the round taken care of. It's the alchemist that saved the day. It's always uh, the full metal alchemist that saved the day. And here is our balloon of the day, which we're going to use. The monkey ace. Hopefully our alchemist is able to reach over these. Oh gosh, I almost misplaced it there. Nope, this is going to be bad, isn't it? Oh. I hate it when that kind of stuff takes over your thought process. I need the placement to be as top left as possible so the alchemist can reach, and that is a very tight squeeze. Looks like it will be able to reach it, but it's... Oh, goodness sakes. It's a military tower. For goodness sakes, it's going to be complicated. Let's use a bit of rallying roar there to motivate our towers to pop more. Can we pop more though? That is the fine question of the hour. Let's go with rapid fire. We don't have to worry about camera detection because our beloved ninja monkey over here will be able to deal with around 24 camo green just fine. I'm telling you, we'll be fine. No ifs or buts about it. Oh. But there's still round 23 to cons... Why do I keep jinxing myself? There you go, that's better. A bit more kaiju power gets us over the finish line. I know this is the incorrect path to go across when it comes to the one which we should do when it comes to the flying fortress aspect, but we are doing this nonetheless. Um, okay, I was about to be concerned about that last one there. Thank you very much. Sharper darts and then centered path. New central flight path for maximum map coverage. Round 27. Lots of pierce required for lots of balloons. Center path now acquired. We're still going to go back to figure eight for a more central path of the map. Uh, round 28. We've got the alchemist and Pat to deal with these pests for... What if the alchemist is actually going to... Oh my gosh, actually. Yeah, I think the alchemist is making round 28 worse because Pat per slap does... Better than the alchemist. Okay, let's use kaiju power while the leads are there. There we go. That's much better. It's always about that rallying roar at the end of the day, baby. Tell you what we can also get. 
Well, we, when we can afford it, some cleansing foam. I think this is a great idea, but I can't afford it. And a red balloon's leaked. Nothing like a bit of a slap to wake you up. A wake up slap. We are nearly, actually, we need the cleansing foam first because of a few particular rounds with camo balloons. So we have to sacrifice getting never missed targeting. We will need it though because of a particular round 40 coming up with the first Moab of the day. There goes some rain world got to help us with those rainbow balloons. We've now got never missed targeting, which is going to make all of our darts much more viable. <laughs> Rather than always relying on sheer luck to see if the dart even has a chance of popping one balloon. Larger potion, acidic mixture dip, berserker brew. I'm contemplating whether or not to get... Oh, we're not going to remove any corn here, otherwise that would break the no harvest rule. Uh, this would actually deliver more damage onto the balloons, which is not something that I'm liking at the moment. Round 39 is... Gonzo, round 40. Let's use Rallying Roar. And... Uh, luck against the first Moab. Oh gosh, it was slaughtered and almost soloed by our never missed targeting Monkey Ace. Do not comment in the sections of doing a no harvest two Mega Pops with never missed targeting. <laughs> it's just not enough map space. Grow, I say radar scan, not grow block. Actually, grow blocker can be nice, especially if you're relying on a tail of low pierce. But hey, damage, I'm looking at you round 79 and your many, many rainbow regrows. Okay, we've got the 220 monkey village up and running. Now we're going to get ourselves not removing corn, we're going to get stronger stimulant, and then we are going to go with. Uh, the Spectra. Do remember that the Flying Fortress is an incredibly expensive upgrade, so we may not be able to get all of the uh, support towers that we would like to get in a particular No Harvest 2 Mega Pops run, like in the past, let's say, Pop and All, which is much harder now to do because the bonus bad damage is now smaller. But I think there's reduced from, like, say, 10 or 8 down to 2. To post shell, it does far less damage against a bad than it would normally do so otherwise. And then players would be like, this is actually a massive buff. Do you not realize the, <laughs> the buff that it provides to the pop and all? No, speak to me in English terms, imbecile. Ninja Kiwi seems to have a habit nowadays of increasing the price of the Sky Shredder. Even though they keep saying it's like one of the best towers in the game, which I kind of agree with. But at the same time, you keep nerfing the poor thing to the point where you can't afford it. Because Operation Dark Storm is just not good enough in order to actually get to that point. I've not contemplated doing Sky Shred on this map because of the sheer fact that it's just too expensive to try and get to. Maybe if it wasn't for the first time when Ninja Kiwi nerfed the price, I like, would contemplate it we now have spectra up and running and thanks to update 41 the spectra has retained the random spread of darts while having the never miss targeting option still well the priority sort of stuff still there so we now have even more dart and when that doesn't work get yourself even more boom First BFB of the day. It's honestly going to be very easy now up until like the 80s and definitely the 90s because Spectra can hold out on its own without too much in the means of support, but we're still going to get support nonetheless in the name of Overclock. Overclock is keen in a two mega box run. Round 63 is non existent because the Spectra is just so damn good. But also because of the Spectra's insane attack speed, we never, we barely ever see the Acidic Mixture Dip and the Strongest Stimulant applied to it. Um, Flair, why can't you just get, um, Perishing Potions? It's so good when you're trying to buff a tower because it enhances the Strongest Stimulant and the Acidic Mixture Dip part. I think what people don't get is the fact that duration of a buff and the actual effect of the buff itself are two completely different ballparks. Yes, having a longer 
or more ammo duration is a good thing but saying it so that it's even stronger than it normally is because you go to perishing potions no what i'd like you to do for those who definitely believe that perishing potions is better with permanent brew when it comes to the actual buffing of towers is to just test it out for yourself it's the same kind of mindset with people who say that you can just buy Geraldo, get him to level 20, put down two Paragon Power Totems, sell him, and rebuy him back up to level 20, and all of his items will once again completely replenish. I say this every time. Geraldo's items do not reset after the first time he goes to level 20. I went on for such a ramp there that I forgot where we now have money for overclock. Is that wonderful? You know what? We're going to go center path and we're going to place the cursor down here. Just so that as many bombs and darts travel in this straight line here. Round 75 is done. Round 76 is also done. Round 78, even more ceramics. And when that doesn't work, when it comes to getting through all of the defenses of the monkeys put in place, send out even more ceramic. There goes the other wave of ceramics which are no longer with us. Rip to round 78 ceramics from the power of the spectra. Here is a VZUMG. And it goes down just like the rest. Now, I have a bit of a difficult decision to make here. Because we're not going to get 91,800 by the time round 90 comes around. And we need MIB so that we can actually damage DDTs. Because we at the moment have both sharp attacks and explosive attacks. Neither which can damage DDTs. Yes, the Alchemist very, very temporarily on the Spectra can make its darts hurt DDTs. But it's not a good source of naval it to do damage we need mib when you're in a baguette fencing competition and your final opponent is a person that has started baking at the age of zero has fenced at the age of three who is a master of both baking of baguettes and fencing and to top it all off they are french you don't stand a chance I actually think I would do Spectra at some point, but not like immediately after this video because it's just too soon with this particular tower. <laughs> it's like, let's just do that straight after. Although the only benefit is because, well, we can access Call to Arms sooner. We can access Overclock sooner because we don't have to worry about the fact that we would need to save up 91,800 for the Flying Fortress. I swear this is Exterminator 418's favorite tower. Round 90 is DDT territory. And they go down just like that. Hmm. I am now a little bit on the anxious side going forward now. Because we don't really have a lot of means to try and help us out with. Like, I could put down a glue gunner. But then I'll just delay myself being able to get the flying behemoth. And we are... Well, we're, we're struggling to be able to pop a black balloon, for goodness sakes. Yeah, we need to do some centered path microing as the round progresses. Yeah, let's put you up there now so that we can get the other end of the track. I don't like the idea, but we really need to do this. But, oh gosh, I'm, I'm just worried about these towers getting popped. No... Will you stop prompting me to remove corn? This is the no harvest challenge, for goodness sakes. And you keep wanting me to remove the corn? No thanks, we're going to have a harvest all year this year. And we're not going to remove the corn too soon. When it's not too soon, which is when this game ends. Okay, round 93. Let's put you back over here. We are going to use the rallying roar when... When the DDT spawn... Okay, we're just going to use it now, actually. Just because these are making them too far along the track. And the DDTs go down. Yeah, DDTs are not... Like, aside from their speed, they're not the biggest issue. It's mainly the bulkiness of these fortified BFBs on this round. Let's put you up here for the moment. Let's ensure that you can actually... Oh, that's actually a nice line of fire, actually, there. 
like where the plane was that was actually quite cool okay more center path micro in so that we can manipulate our targeting i don't want to use running raw because then these towers will get even more pots okay that should be okay now okay round 95 we should be able to afford flying fortress soon if not on round 96 then on round 97 possibly but then even that might not be the case round 95 okay rallying roar when the dts are now here oh gosh they're making their way yeah we need to we need to go over here now we need to go over here now uh, if only if you fly faster and we are what you call struggling here oh my god oh. do we really need to invest in a glue gun of sorts i'm going zero one three but that's the most i'm going to put down and uh you're gonna stay there so that then when ddts make their way here they can be struck by the moab glue yeah, not all of the moas have been stuck. That's the problem. Just sticking to bigger globs is not doing the trick. Oh, come on, darts. If this doesn't work, then I've got something else involved. A little better, but still not enough. No. I've got something else in mind. It's more expensive, but when the DDTs are going to get too far along the track, that's when we're going to use the balloon sabo. Okay, this is much more manageable than before, but it's still looking a little bit hairy here. Oh, that was an that was unlucky. The Spectra should not have been over here when that happened. Let's use it later on in the round, actually. That might actually help us out here. It's just a fact that sometimes the Spectra is not in this lane here, so it's kind of difficult to try and control all of their movement in a way. Come on, please. Oh, for... I guess I've got to use it even later in the round. I exit out of the game because I used Balloon Sabo to own it early, sorry. Which is why, um... Which is why Overclock is over here and Pat's abilities are now over here. What about first Fiend for up around? So that we're always popping the DTs here and here. But at the same time, that's going to make us suffer later on throughout the round. Yeah, I'm starting to feel the effects of it now later on in the round without having Balloon Sabo to control all of this. Oh! I don't care that Ace Micro is a thing. I'm not doing it. Let's try both, but it's like I need to get 25k to get Flying Fortress. And is, am I going to have enough money in order to actually get that? No, I can't even do it with that because sometimes the glue doesn't stick to DDTs even when they're decamified. Right, I have another solution. It's called Brickle. A pistol and one bullet. No, it just seems like the back most DDTs are not hurt at all. Let's try not for more damage against Moabs with the perishing potion. Oh my god, the game just crashed. Well, it seems the crash has given me some benefit. No, go let them pass through. We're not. This tower sucks. Hello. That seems to have all oh, done it. Good, good, good. Please. I hate round 95 of us now. Thank goodness we're now uh, done with those DDTs. But now we have ourselves a new scenario. This stealing too many pops potentially. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a round 98 scenario. We're hopefully going to get the Flying Fortress if we can get the money for it. Nearly 5,000. Oh my god, 17,000. Um, 19,000. No, don't remove corn. Um, 22,000. Yeah, this is going to be very tight. It's honestly been not a very good game when it comes to, like, getting the pot. It's just you're so expensive. That's the problem. The Flying Fortress is just such an expensive behemoth to try and get. Ah, perishing potions has its downsides when it comes to the stripping fortified layer of which is the biggest vein for getting this upgrade for a 2 megaboss scenario. Oh, 
God, this round's so painful. Don't want to use Rallying Roar anymore because we're just going to get too many pops stolen. Okay, we're going to floor flying fortress. But do not let that random ceramic escape. Okay, so where we are now? 20, 30, 33, 38. Oh, God, just so tight. Oh, I can't let this bad go down too far. Oh, come on. I don't want to do this again. This match was torturous. Please. Oh, come on. <sighs> this is why you don't put perishing potions on. Yeah, I have no idea what to say about this because this is honestly so god damn stupid. Like, you, this is why you never buy perishing potions for two mega pops. Unless you know the alchemist is not going to attack a single balloon. It strips fortified off smaller balloons. And round 98 has so many ceramics which are fortified. That is why people don't understand why this is a bane rather than a benefit. Who's trying to do this again because of 200 pops missed out? Ow. Well, we've gone for round 95. Again. No perishing potion this time. Again. People will think on Reddit that this was the worst idea possible. Those same people don't know two mega pops. We are getting pops with the alchemists. Just far less this time. Got the flying fortress a second time. Just hope there's no BS ceramics on here. Is this going to be better this time? I sure hope so. I sure hope so indeed. It's in me long enough to get back to this point. Are you happy yet now? Are you happy yet? Are you happy with this? If you're not, then I don't know what to say. If you think I should have done this the first time, then well, I tried to do it the first time. If you think I should re-record all of this again to try and make this a black border, you are BSing me right now. Yeah, so, this right here is why, Reddit, you never get perishing potions for your two Mega Pops run. Because then all of those pops will be stripped away. Isn't that fun? Oh yeah, we done this this time. Was it worth it? No. Not for that one upgrade that I should never have gotten the first time around. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, goodbye.